Welcome to Studio D in the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. And now here's your host, Jessica Cooley. Hi, everyone, and welcome inside Studio D for another edition of Sooner Sports Pad. I'm Jessica Cootie alongside Lauren Everett and Tim O'Donnell. Guys, did you get a chance to check out the spring game this weekend? Spring game was great. Lots of great things. Speaking of great things, we have some visitors all the way from Bangladesh here. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Also in our audience, we have OU Women's Tennis and the Bucks Fraternity. So thanks for being here, guys. Great audience tonight. Great audience. Well, coming up on the show today, Dylan Overton, a starting pitcher for the Sooner baseball team, really one of those dominant starters, is here. We're going to have a live interview coming up with him in just a little bit. And later on, Sooner Sports Pads, Michael Runyon tells us a little bit about what went on before the spring game. And later in face-off, lots to talk about in the spring game. Me and Laura are going to talk about who is the most explosive player for us. All right, thanks guys. We'll catch up with you in a few minutes. At the conclusion of spring football every after every year, the Sooners hold an annual spring game, giving players an opportunity to get back out on Owen Field in front of thousands of Sooner fans in an offense versus defense game-like situation. It was highlighted by the competition at quarterback, but we get things rolling, showing you a 30-yard run by Brennan Clay. Blake Bell, we've seen what he can do with his feet, but showing Sooner fans what he can do with his arm right here. He goes deep to Duran Neal. Nice grab by Duran Neal, and then the Bell... Neil combo would go ahead and finish off this drive. Bell keeping the play alive and finding Neil in the end zone, giving the offense a score. Let's show you a defensive highlight. Trevor Knight fumbles and linebacker Frank Shannon with the recovery. We go back to Bell. He finds Roy Finch across the middle, and he'll take care of the rest, making his teammates miss. He takes it to the house. Gabe Eicher said he was a player to watch, and the crowd absolutely loved it. All right, to the freshman Trevor Knight. He had a big pass play to set this one up. He finds Don Cadell in the back of the end zone for the score. And this is a glimpse at what all three of these guys can do. But Kendall Thompson is just so good on his feet, so elusive. He would finish off the drive with a touchdown pass to David Smith. The white team would end up winning the game 28-24, to but I, like most people, am still not even sure what that means. Everyone was a little bit confused by the scoring system. But after the game, all the coaches saying it's still a decision still was not made at quarterback. But let's hear from all three of those guys after the game on Saturday. Yeah, all I've done is run around here. Here and uh, I just kind of want to show you know everyone I can sling it around a little bit too. And uh, but like you said, it's it's good knowing you know you have different different options. You can maybe run up the middle, you know, different stuff off the linebackers and, and play action. So it's it's all good. I just you know when I move, you know, it's just when the protection breaks down, or you know, for the most part, the line did a great job. You know, I feel like I need to get out, and the coach Hype always says, don't hesitate to get out when you need to. I feel like I threw the ball well when it was there, and. Uh, just some things, me and uh, us and the receivers got to get some more continuity and that'll just, in the summer and things like that, that'll uh, continue to get better. We do have the ability to run, which we haven't had here in the past, but we want to get the ball in our playmakers' hands because they're going to make the big plays for us. Close to being done talking football. We've got still a lot more to talk about, but Lauren and Tim are going to get you caught up on all the other highlights here around Norman. That's right. We're going to start with the number one softball team in Lubbock this weekend against the Texas Tech Red Raiders, and they swept them. It started on Friday, nine to nothing, six inning shutout. Another one on Saturday, a six to nothing win, and finally on Sunday, the offense helps out the pitching in a 13 to seven victory to get them that sweep. In that game, Lauren Chamberlain, a career high four hit. Shelby Penley added six RBIs. At 37-2, and two, they're off to the best start in program history. This weekend, they'll play at the ASA Hall of Fame Stadium in OKC as they square off with OSU in a Bedlam matchup. This team's almost unstoppable. unstoppable. It's really championship or bust for them. Right, so lots of highs this weekend, but there were some lows. It was a weekend of firsts for Sooner Baseball, but not, the, not necessarily good ones. They lost their first series opening game against Baylor on Friday and eventually lost their first Big 12 series of the year. But Saturday, the Sooners earned a come-from-behind win beating the Bears 3-1. to one. Dylan Sooners, Overton with the win. Right, the Sooners went into Sunday's game looking good, up nine runs to four in the fourth inning, but they didn't get much further from there. Baylor got back-to-back -back four run innings in the seventh and eighth, and Sooners lost 12-10, to 10, but not, not all is bad. Despite dropping two or three games this weekend, Oklahoma remains in first place in the Big 12, holding a slight edge over Kansas State and Baylor. So a little disappointing, upset by Baylor there, but not bad. And speaking of upsets, a huge upset in women's tennis as they beat the 32nd ranked TCU Horn Frogs in their first, to give them their first conference loss of the season in a 4-3 victory on Sunday. After losing the doubles point, OU rallied to win four of the first five singles matches to earn the victory. 
Uh, OU will close out the regular season this weekend in Stillwater before the Big 12 Championships begin on April 25th. Great win for them. Great win. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about the spring game. want to get you guys' thoughts, of course. Um, maybe a little bit of a vanilla um, version of the Sooner offense. Didn't see everything from the Sooner defense, but still could take away some things from the spring game on Saturday. So, Lauren, I'll start with you. What did you see out of the spring game? Well, coaches still aren't sure which quarterback is going to be starting August 1st. First, Heupel still wants the competition to keep going, but it's definitely Blake Bell's to lose. He stole the spotlight in the spring game, and Stoops usually goes with the veteran, but Trevor Knight and Kendall Thompson bring speed and agility, but don't show as much poise as Bell does. Thompson is looking like he's going to be the number two guy. He's very explosive and accurate. But let's move on to the guys that protect the quarterbacks, and that's the O-line. They haven't been very good the past few years, but they stepped up in the spring game. Yeah, and what I really took away was the defense. It, lo and all, it looked like a lot like the defense of last season. They kind of got torched. I know it's a scrimmage, but they gave up 689 yards of total offense, 450 passing yards, 239 rushing yards. The D-line did look very good. Lots of freshmen filling voids, but overall the defense just kind of got torched. Lots of explosive plays like we saw last season that they gave up. Lots of quarterback runs. Finch's great run and catch that we saw. So they just need to contain those explosive plays, I think, a little bit more. All right. Thank you guys very much. We're just getting started here on Sooner Sports Pad. Coming up right after this break, we're going to check in with the women's tennis team. And Lauren and Tim are going to face off. We'll be right back right after this. Check, check, mic check, one, two, mic check. Can you count to 10? One, two, three. <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> yes, I can hear you.
tennis team here with us in the audience tonight. I'm joined by Junior Erman Rahana. Did I say it right? Yes. All right, good. Okay. Beautiful name. You guys are coming off a huge win over TCU on Sunday. Um, how big was that win for you guys? How exciting was it handing TCU their first conference loss of the season? It was really exciting. Um, TCU is a really great team. You know, they're really talented, but we proved and we showed that we work hard, and with that, you can beat everybody, you know, so. You've got Oklahoma State coming up on Saturday. Bedlam round two. Already beat the Cowgirls once this season. Yep. Yeah. How big is this conference match for this team as you head into Big 12s in a week? It, it is really big. You know, we won once against them. We lost our doubles point, won four singles. Uh, but our goal now is to win the doubles point, too, and beat them even better, you know. You guys are hosting the Big 12 championships here in Norman. That's exciting. Yeah. So everybody can come check them out. But what does this team need to do to win a Big 12 championship? Well, we, we've been working really hard. You know, we, everyone is doing extra work. And, you know, we don't have that much of social life right now, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right because, you know, it's just uh, a few matches, you know. We're going to give our best and, you know, just, yeah, give our best. <laughs> oh, thank you guys so much for being here. Good luck in the Big 12s coming up in a week. And you can see it right here, April 25th through the 28th, right here in Norman. Check, come check this team out. They would love your support, right? Yeah. Thank All right. you so much. <laughs> Thanks. All right. It is now time for Sooner Sports Pad Face Off. We've got three different topics for Lauren and Tim. We're going to let them face off. Let's see some fight between you guys. Okay, let's go it's at on. it a little it. bit. It's on. It's on. Give this audience a show. Okay, let's Watch start yourself. off with talking the spring game again. A lot of positions open going into next fall. But after the spring game, what um, or who do you think separated themselves in a position battle? Well, Blake Bell finally showed he could be more than just the bell dozer. What? What was that? He finished the game 14 for 23 for 213 yards with two touchdowns, no turnovers. He really stepped up, took command of the offense, showed poise in the pocket. Uh, he was solid from beginning to end, and that's really what the coaches are looking for in this QB race. Well, on the defensive side, Jordan Phillips, the freshman defensive tackle, or sorry, sophomore defensive tackle, he could be the star of this D-line in 2013. He's 6'6", 325 pounds of pure athleticism, three tackles and a sack against a lot of O-linemen who are keep competing for positions. Bob Stoops raved about the D-line. Mike Stoops raved specifically about Phillips, said he has to be a player for us. He got to learn from guys like David King. I think he's a guy to look out for. Yeah. Well, those we'll are see. two guys that Sooner coaches were expecting to show up on Saturday and have a big game. So the next question is, who surprised you on Saturday spring game, Lauren? All right, Timmy, you ready for this one? <laughs> I saw fire light up in Trey Matwire. Oh, he was, he was the game, the leading receiver, caught I'm six done. passes on the I day can't even be for on 122 show with yards. Two of his grabs were 40-yard fades where he was able to adjust to the cornerbacks. Uh, he had a great spring game last year, but he didn't really step up in the fall. So hopefully this year he can really step up, be that talented guy. He could really be OU's deep threat. Well, and speaking of Trey, I think Trey Franks is a guy who can fill multiple roles on this team. Tony Jefferson, Demontre Hurst, a couple of guys that have left at safety and at cornerback. I think he can fill both of those positions as well. He's explosive, still has a lot of progress to make. He's played at wide receiver a little bit at OU. But like I said, he got to learn from guys like Tony Jefferson, Aaron Colvin, who's still on the team, had seven tackles and a couple pass breakups in that spring game. So I think he's a guy too. Currently, lots of debate surrounding pay for play on college athletes. So question is, do you think that college athletes should be, play, should be paid, Lauren? My question is, is getting your entire college tuition paid for not good enough? Really, I mean, <laughs> the passion that you see in these college athletes is because they're not getting paid. It's because money is not getting involved. They're getting a free tuition. And most of these athletes aren't going to make it to the NFL, NBA, so they're getting a school tuition for free. I agree with you that I don't think players should necessarily players should necessarily be paid. No, but they a lot of people do think so because no. these players provide millions upon millions of dollars to the university and see absolutely none of it. OU last season, 100 OU athletics, 100 million dollars in revenue. There's no secret there, and the players see absolutely none of it. Yes, they're getting the fame. They are, they're, they're getting, getting the their fame. tuition paid for. But when you go out and buy their jerseys with their number on it, you buy tickets to go see them play. <laughs> You go and see them play, they're not seeing a dime of it. So I can see why people would think that players, sh you know, should get paid. Yeah, but all right, good okay. debate today, guys. But I had some whispers from the audience saying Lauren won this one today. Oh, so. no. Tim, I'm Thank sorry, you, you lost two in a row. The fire you joke. Lost, no, you've lost two 
two in a row. Really really sorry. It's the worst fire joke <laughs> I've ever heard. of the week time. Let's check it out. It's coming from uh, Game Hiker. Of the week. Only a matter of time until the women of Syracuse start obsessing over Drew Allen. Congratulations <laughs> to my four-year roomie, of course. Uh, Drew announcing that he will be playing at the University of Syracuse coming up next season. All right, coming up right after this break, we're going to take a look at the tailgating scene here in Norman this past Saturday. And Dylan Overton is here. He's going to join us here in a little bit. Special thanks to our television cornerstone partners, Chesapeake Energy, Windstar World Resorts, OU Outreach, OU Presidents Associates, and the OU Alumni Association. And we welcome you back to Sooner Sports Pad. For a few Sooner fans, the wait from after the bowl game until kickoff in the fall brings a little bit of a withdrawal from the sights and sounds of the tailgating scene. But the annual spring game gives Sooner fans a chance to dust off the, the grills and their Saturday game day gear. Drew Farley, Michael Runyon, and A.J. King take us around the tailgating scene in Norman on Saturday's spring game. Smoke and spring fever filled the air as Sooners gathered to get a glimpse of their team for the first time. For some, watching the game is a family affair. Sooner Sports Pad's Drew Farley mingled with the masses. What's your name? I'm Ron Brazel. Ron, and you're out here tailgating today, so yeah. spring football's coming around, tailgating season started up. Just talk about your experience with OU football. Well, it, uh, it all started a few years back well, when I was about seven years old. Uh, I was introduced to this great stadium and this great facility and uh, got in my blood. And um, we decided that in order to kick off football, it should not be in August. It should always occur in the spring. Right. And so uh, we make this a family event. And uh, I go online, I purchase the tickets and invite all family. And we usually have between 25 and 30 family members come out here. And uh, this is how we kick off our, our Boomer Sooner time. Boomer Sooner! Woo! That boomer sooner is passing on to the next generation, it seems. This year, Landry's gone. How do you guys feel about that? Good, uh, pretty good. Pretty good? No yeah. more Landry? So who are you most excited about to see today? Blake Bell. Blake, Blake Bell. Bell. Blake Bell. Everybody for Blake Bell? Yes. No Kendall Thompson? Uh. <laughs> but fans were not here to debate starting quarterbacks. They were here for one reason. They put on this big event. What can you tell me about the barbecue? I know you sampled some earlier. You got a little still left on your lips. It was uh, it was pretty tasty. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely worth the wait. I went through the lines pretty fast. I thought I was going to be there forever. But hey, I was zooming through the lines, got my food. I'm pretty full. I'm ready to watch some football. Fans came hungry for food and football. They left satisfied. Michael Runyon, soon. 
thank you all three of you guys for that interesting piece. It was uh, fun to see <laughs> that that uh, atmosphere <laughs> back in Norman. It's great. All right, well, we continue our position breakdowns with the quarterback, and it's the first quarterback battle here in Norman since 2007. Trevor Knight, Blake Bell, Kendall Thompson, all vying to be the Sooners' next starting signal caller. We start with Blake Bell, of course, a guy who has had a lot of experience, 11 touchdowns out of the Belldozer package last season. Lauren, he said he wanted to show off his arm on Saturday's game. Do you think he accomplished that? Right, yeah. Blake Bell has the experience. He ha he's played in 20 games, but his opportunities to throw the ball have been very limited. But he's gotten the experience to play under pressure in crunch time, so he's more comfortable throwing the ball. Uh, he's also more willing to play it safe when the completions aren't there, and that's what he's learned through his experience. He has thrown the ball in tough situations, like in the Notre Dame game. When we were down, it was fourth and two on the Irish nine-yard line. He made that crucial first, uh, excuse me, he made that crucial first down pass to Trey Millard. So he's learned how to throw under pressure. And Tim, Saturday was the first type of situ game-like situation for the other two guys. Kendall saw a little bit of it last season, but really the first time Trevor Knight got out in front of a live crowd. What did you see out of those two guys? Well, I think they showed a lot, and I think, honestly, it is Blake Bell's job to lose, but they've made it a little bit tougher on him. Thompson was explosively fast and showed off his arm as well, threw a nice touchdown in the end zone. You can't really teach that. Knight struggled in the first half. In the second half, he really stepped it up. He and Thompson led the comeback for the white squad to beat the red squad, and they showed they could run and throw just as much as Blake Bell. It's not, it's not uh, Blake Bell's by any means, though. Again, and Coach is saying that no decision would be made based off of the spring game. And if you take a look at some of the previous dates in the Bob Stoops era, quarterbacks, in, uh, when they have a quarterback battle under Bob Stoops, most of the time they don't be, they are not announced until the fall and most of the time just days before mm -hmm. the, the first game. So, so, so don't right. expect August to see 31st. a name until August. Yep. Right. <laughs> All right, coming up right after this break, Dylan Overton is going to join us. We're going to have a live interview with him. We'll also have a fun game to play with him. Make sure you stick around. We'll be right back on Sooner Sports Pad. Oh. Yeah. Dylan, can I get a mic check? No talk. Tell me about your day. Check, check. What'd you do? Mic check. check. I went golfing today. Yeah, you went golfing today? Yeah. Uh, no, I took it. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. 93. <laughs> pitching staff has been downright dominant so far this season and a big reason for that is lefty starter Dylan Overton 2.20 ERA 7 and 2 on the season 59 strikeouts and coming off an impressive win over Baylor this past weekend eight innings one run eight strikeouts Dylan Overton also serving as team captain he's here and he's with Lauren and Tim well Dylan first off thank you thank you very much for joining us on the show thank you for having me all right so OU baseball off to a great start how do you feel about how the season's been going so far Oh, I mean, I think it's going really good. We're, our team chemistry is probably the best thing about it. I mean, we're having fun out there on the field and off, and uh, we just love going out to the field every day. 
You guys just had a tough series loss against Baylor. What do you guys take from that? How do you guys improve going forward? Uh, we just we just learn about it. I mean, it, it was a big series, and we probably shouldn't have lost it. But hopefully, in the long run, it doesn't come back and bite us in the butt. But uh, we're just gonna keep plugging away, and we got five games coming up this week, and we're gonna try to win all of them. Yeah, Last right. season, you guys were knocked out of the Super Regionals of the NCAA Tournament. How are you guys planning on getting it further this season? Uh, I think a big part of it, again, will just be our team chemistry. Our team chemistry this year, is, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, especially with our freshmen. You, half the time, you can't even tell our freshmen are freshmen just because of the way they play. And I think that alone will take us a long way also. Now, you and Jonathan Gray, the other OU starting pitcher, are kind of BFFs. Would that be, would that <laughs> be right yeah. to say? Yeah. So what's, what's it like not only competing with him but him being your best friend? How do you guys, how do, you guys do that? Well, I've always told him he's, he's partially my bodyguard just, cause he's, <laughs> just because he's so big. But he's also a, a big teddy bear, too. So, no, but, uh, no, it, it's fun That's to cute. have him on my side no matter what. And it, it, we're also very competitive best friends. So if he does good on Friday, I'm going to try to up him one on Saturday. Naturally, yeah. So you guys are both projected to be first-round draft picks. How cool is that with you and your best friend? Oh, I mean, it's a dream come true. Both of us, as we were little kids, we always dreamed about going in the first round. And out of high school and junior college for him, we weren't fortunate to do that. But this year, we have the chance to, and we're not going to let anything get in front of that. Great. Hopefully we can see you guys battle it out in the major leagues sometime. That'd be cool. That would be oh, cool. Yeah. Not as teammates. JD has a question <laughs> for you. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you have any pregame rituals? And if so, can you share those with us? Pregame rituals. <sighs> pregame rituals. I don't think I do, to be honest. No superstitions at all? My superstitions come and play when I get on the field, not before. Oh, okay. Makes sense. So yeah. what is it? Uh, before every inning, after I warm up, I walk behind the mound in a circle, and then I kind of kneel, put my glove to my face, say a little prayer, and then hop on the rubber. Very there cool. you go. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, Fresh Quez is off this week, so we've got um, – what is it? Nevit to win it or something like that? I, guess I don't know. Nevitt We've got to a game it. today for uh, Dylan and Lauren. I'm going to let you explain it. All right. Basically, what we're going to do <laughs> is play Bop It. I'll be on a team with Jessica and Timmy. Okay, yeah, I guess we're starting. All right. Yeah. Wait, we're on a team. How are I we know. Supposed to, yeah. So you pass it to me. I pass it to him. Okay. All right. That's okay. fine. Perfect. Right. You ready? Pass it this way. Bop it. Do you go to your mess up? Yeah. All right, it's going to start to get faster. I can't hear yeah, you. Yeah, can't hear We can't hear you. Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's, oh, man. You guys what trying to make me yeah. lose or what? Yeah, I don't want to lose, guys. Come on. I don't want to lose. How do you think he feels when he pitches away and everyone's booing right. at him? Is he so complaining? No. So you start. Uh, there. Oh, it. Oh, it. Oh, wait, what? Pass it. I'm expecting to be better at that. I'm not really good at it. I can't hear. Bop it. Bop it. Bop it. Press quiz, is this how you feel every week when people are picking other hand. on you? Pass it. It's really hard to hear. Pull it. Oh, really? Really? Really, Tim? All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Pop it. Pop it. Pop it. All right. Pop it in. Yes! Okay, okay, okay. Pull it. Oh! Oh! Yes! Oh! No, 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 it's all right. No! Wait, it's I can't right. hear it. The game is rigged. All right. Lauren, I guess so, it's all the time on. we have okay, once we're just pad, so it was a tie. It's one to one. Oh, it's a tie. It's one to one. We got to finish it. We got to finish it. All right. If you want to check out any of our full Sooner Sports Pad episodes, you can check it out on our YouTube channel, Sooner Sports Pad on YouTube. All right, that's all the time we have. We're still playing. We'll see you next time.